What if all the children in the world can make a painting together? What if all the children of the world created a painting together? What would that painting represent? What could that painting teach us? Could the answer to the world's problems be solved by children? What if the children of the world all joined together and unlike the adults, created instead of destroyed? This idea, inspired by an eight-year-old girl, is what pushed Laurie Marshall to try to bring children from all different walks of life together. Three years ago, I was an artist in residence at Hillsborough Elementary School making a painting with all 127 kids in the school. And when the painting was all done, Meredith Miller, who was in second grade, said, I wish the whole world could see our painting and then the whole world would be happy. Then she said, what if the whole world made a painting together? And I said, Meredith, that's a big idea. Let's start with the children. The seed of this new idea was first planted in Rappahannock County, Virginia, where 1,000 art students began preparing the pieces for a giant 16-foot by 8-foot puzzle that eventually grew into the first singing tree mural and now is inspiring a force spreading into Pennsylvania and even across the globe. I'm, I'm really amazed to see how far it's come. It's, it's really great. I mean, it just kind of started off as a neat little idea and then just kind of spread everywhere. It's, it's really cool to see that happening. Like all the art classes got together and everybody worked on it. I didn't think we could do it at first because of how big she wanted it to be. And I don't know, it was, it was a different idea than anything else we had ever done. Everyone had to pick certain things that they would do and they had certain required things. We did the trunk, we did a lot of the cutting out of the leaves. I painted a lot of the water. Did a lot of the hands and drawings for the trunk. It was difficult at first, but we got the hang of it and it became very fun. I, I was impressed with the size of the project that we were doing in this little school. And once the art departments of this little school finished the preliminary work of designing the tree, cutting out the pieces, and painting the backboard, it was time to create the individual images that would make up the finished mural. The smallest children made their images on the leaves, while the middle schools fit together what would become the trunk and the high school students puzzled together the globe. Every kid in the school would come and make a leaf. Everyone would like sit down and draw all these squares and people really got excited about doing these squares. Everybody got to put in um, things that they wanted to say or memories or anything that they wanted to say from their heart. I drew the Blue Ridge Mountains with the sunset and um, the moon over the ocean. So, and I put them right together and they kind of went together with the colors and everything. And I did those because they're light and I love the mountains and the way the, they, every day they look different. I did a cross. I did music notes because I like to sing and those drama faces because I like to act. While many students used their part of the painting to express themselves, others decided to represent someone else. Stars are attributed to somebody who had passed away. I made a star to represent the death of my brother and how it made me feel. I put in a um, quote that I made up myself and it says, um, you don't know the importance of life until death. And that was for my grandparents. I made a couple of those for my grandfather because he was really, really into art. Um, I didn't get to see him as much because I was a little kid, but he has a lot of his pictures and I have a lot because he drew a lot of me because I was his little doll baby, that's what he called me.
The Singing Tree is a book by Kate Sarity um, that's about World War I. And during World War I, soldiers crawled all night long on their bellies in Hungary to escape the enemy. And during that weary ordeal, they came across no living creature. No squirrel, no rabbit, no bird, no tree, no human, no village, no house. There wasn't any sign of life because of war. And the soldiers got more and more terrified as the night went on. When the dawn came, there was one tree that was still alive. And in this tree, hundreds of birds had come from miles around who aren't normally together, and they were all singing. And I look upon our Earth as the singing tree of the solar system, and perhaps of the Milky Way, because there is no life any place else around. We've been looking. And the fact that there is life here on this planet is the bottom line. All of our differences aren't as big as the fact that existence is here, and not only existence that has produced amazing animals and plants, but the human being with its consciousness. And that's what I want the kids to see, that the miracle of life is the bottom line. The Singing Tree is designed to involve the children from start to end and seeks to better the world through the voices of young people. This project is based on two ideas I have that I bring to all the work I do with students. The first one is that kids learn best by making real products for a real audience that come out of a real interest. The only way to compete with media right now, who is our young people's main teacher, um, is to do real stuff, to engage the kids in really having an effect in the world. Media uses all the intelligences. It uses story, movement, music, visuals, to engage kids, and it does it really well. And schools can compete if we use that incredible energy and vision that kids have to do something real. And that's my second idea, which is that the vision and fresh point of view that children have and young people have is a healing tool for the world. I think it'd be great if everybody in the world could work on it. It's a really good way of bringing people together, you know, and having them all work on one thing as part of a unified group is really an excellent idea. Everyone just grows together, not, you know, we all go on for our own you know, separate gardens, that we all create this one thing, this one tree, this one life. It's just something that should be done many times over and over again. And it has been. Soon after the Rappahannock mural was complete, Lori replanted the project in Pittsburgh and challenged even more people to get involved through the help of two local schools, Mount Lebanon High School in suburban Pittsburgh and Peabody High School in the heart of Pittsburgh were both eager and willing to drive the project to what it has become today. One of our instructors, June Edwards, who has moved on to the uh, teaching at the collegiate level, first brought uh, Miss Marshall around and they discussed the project and the uh, impact that it could have on our students since it was potentially going to involve not only our students but those from uh, uh, another school district as well. It, the kids certainly got excited about that prospect. What I heard them say is that they were very hungry to be connected with other kids, to be connected with kids who are different than them, um, to be uh, to be able to express what's inside them. Those were the two things that I think they valued the most about the project. I think it's great because, you know, there are a lot of school rivalries, you know, with athletics and stuff like that. It's great that they're going to get together and work on a collective project. It's, it's good for everybody to participate in and do. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, stop people from arguing and doing something. Made you, like, think that you were part of something, know you were part of something. And the kids from Pittsburgh approached the project just as the kids from Rappahannock did. Uh, my first impression was that it was a little bit crazy, like trying to paint a picture with all the children in the world, you know. It was more than what I expected because it was so big and it was somewhat overwhelming. At first I was like, I'm saying, like, well it's going to take a lot, of, I'm saying, it's going to take a while for it to get done. 
But uh, once they got finished, I was like, yo, it turned out real nice. There were many different images from each school on the different trees, yet they were all connected by the freedom to express passions and values. I also saw a lot of similarities. And one of the similarities was um, that both schools, there were many images of crosses. And one of the students at Mount Lebanon observed, look at all those crosses. And another kid said, yeah, that's because we were supposed to do what's important to us. And there were many crosses on the Peabody one, and there were many crosses on the Rappahannock one. In fact, it was symbols from a wide variety of religions, along with those that questioned and poked fun at everyday life, that helped promote a theme of selflessness and unity throughout the different murals. Well, I wanted to put something. It says, for us, after September 11th, what our thoughts were, and I put religious symbols in there because I thought that's really important to me after what happened September 11th. Um, I drew in, tried to do a golden uh, ohm symbol and uh, just in the clouds, something like that, in blue, sky blue. I put a picture of Che Guevara. He's a Latin American revolutionary from the 1960s. He liberated Cuba, Bolivia, the Congo from evil dictators. He cared nothing of himself but only for the oppressed people of the world, which is a value I really uh, like and approach. It just made the school stand out when, you know, everything was done and it was finished. And, you know, it was a big thing for everybody in the high school because, you know what I mean, people were just staying out of trouble from doing it and everything, you know. It, it helped, it was a big improvement for the environment. I'm sure a lot of people in reading Mount Lebanon and Peabody, what is the connection? The connection is simply kids doing their best and being rewarded with uh, uh, the peace in its entirety whenever you view it. I think it's um, basically a symbol of happiness. I mean, every single image that is basically on the, um, the mural is basically a symbol of happiness. Everyone's together in this world, kind of. I think it's a really good idea for a project because, you know, there's a need for a lot of solidarity in the world. It would make me feel really good if I saw it displayed on, you know, some big, I think she said she donated one of them to some, like the UN or something. That'd be really neat if I saw it there, you know, and I could say, oh, there's my little spot and there's some kids from Peru and there's some kid from Cambodia or something, you know. It'd be really neat to see that. Dr. Maureen Porter from the University of Pittsburgh and I was one of the people to organize taking the singing tree to Peru and we took it down as part of a project that we did um, building a school in a neighborhood of Urubamba. It's on the edge of a moderately sized market town north of Cusco and the project that I lead that goes down to do different kinds of international service learning projects is called Lynx. So you'll see all the people who are part of the Lynx project working with the kids, working with the teachers, and the Singing Tree Project really gave us a way to connect with them on a very different level. We would arrive in the morning in the bus, they'd run down the hill, come pull us off the bus, say, hi, we're glad you're here, come work with us, and just, you know, grab us, you know, three kids per person, and pull us up the hill to come work on their school. And so when we were able to sit down and just do something quiet with them versus playing and roughhousing, it was really nice. Because during the day we were all covered in mud and dirt and grime and hauling rocks and everything together. But in the evening, like you can see, we were able to sit around and draw pictures and color. And it was very soothing. It's a different way to share a different part of our personality. These are some of the first leaves we ever made. And in fact, one of the things that happened this night was um, Kelly Hara grabbed one of the leaves and turned it upside down. And you know, the ginkgo leaves are pretty oddly shaped anyway. And she turned it into a turtle. And that was the very first one. We tried to get them to have the basic idea of just making a few leaves and just being really creative. We just said, make something that's important to you, something that conveys about where you live or what you know, the area is about. And a lot of them started pulling together all sorts of things that were combining them and us. Lots and lots of pictures of the mountains and their village. And you know, everything is green and the people are so happy, and, which is remarkable because it's, it's desolately brown. I mean, these folks live in the poorest part of the neighborhood on the ground that nobody else wanted. The ground that you, know, you can't have any crops on, but yet they see their community as fertile and green and you know, people are happy and the houses are very colorful. While pieces of the tree were still coming in from Peru, other pieces were sent off to Sierra Leone. 
my name is Ahmed Sharif. I'm the president of the Cotton Tree Association of Sierra Leone, Pittsburgh. It's a foundation founded in 1996 during the time when the war in Sierra Leone was very intense. Decided to gather some Sierra Leoneans to form an association to help relieve the agony of Sierra Leoneans, especially the young kids. So during that time, I met with Laurie in the process and she shared with me her interest in trying to make a global tree for kids to express their feelings about how they feel about situations in the world, things that happen around them, and how they can share those experiences with other kids in other parts of the world. And she suggested about putting together a package for my nephew who lives in California that was going to Sierra Leone that the kids of Sierra Leone can also send those pieces to add to the tree for them to also share what they experienced during the 10 years with the rest of the people and the kids in the world. Their joy was immense that they can also be a part of a global effort to educate people about the needs of children and how they desire to live their lives as kids. And the kids were able to express how they felt and how they also shared their feelings about what happened in the United States September 11. Even one of the kids drew a plane that was going through the, the World Trade Center. So it was for them an experience and also they were able to share what they experienced as a healing process for them. And hopefully other kids in the world that see it will also share in their agony and with them together be the rulers that are supposed to be in the future for the rest of the world. And during this time, the project gained national attention when it was exhibited at the U.S. Botanical Gardens in Washington, D.C. When we got here, we just walked through the Botanical Gardens, and we came here, and all the singing trees were up. I don't think they have any idea that their work is being exhibited in a place of national importance in the shadow of the Capitol. Being surrounded by the trees gives me a feeling of hope and peace. I think they're just beautiful. This is the first time I've seen them today. Um, a beautiful way of bringing together people, uh, children from various schools, um, giving them uh, a unified project in which they can express their own individuality. It made me feel nice that everybody in the world could actually do something together because us in America, we just tend to think about ourselves and we don't think about the people who are less fortunate than us and we're about the most fortunate country in the world. Meredith's father told the church the story of Meredith painting with Laurie and having the idea that it would be so wonderful if all the children in the world could paint a mural together. I'm excited because I have a school board meeting which is complete drudgery on Tuesday night and I get to take the news back that I've been and seen all this great stuff from our kids here. I taught with Laurie Marshall at Rappahannock High School. Um, we installed it in the gymnasium and when it was up the entire high school looked at it and they got to witness all of the children in the community. They all got to see their work together. How wonderful children are when they're so innocent. The fact that an eight-year-old girl had the vision for this project is important. Without the lens of division worn by so many adults, Meredith saw that all the children of the earth could work together, making something beautiful and alive. This is the root of peace. With the first planting of the forest of the singing trees, the birds have a place to come from hundreds of miles around, birds who aren't usually together. Through your hope, heart, and creativity, they will find more trees in the desolation left by fear and hatred. The singing tree is a joyous, large reminder that humans, who are alone together in space, while sharing a rare and precious planet, can create together instead of destroying each other. <laughs>